Press, uh, press, yes, it's, it's ticking along. Okay, keep an eye on it. All right. So today we're doing area of triangle by trig. Now we've already done unit circle. We've already know our sine cos tan ratios and we're probably starting to get okay with our exact values. We'll need them here. Uh, but if you don't remember them, that's not too big of an issue. So let's start with a simple triangle first. We're just going to do, I'm going to draw a triangle that looks somewhat equilateral or uh, close to, probably a little close to isosceles, but it doesn't matter what the triangle is. If we were going to work this out through year 9, year 10 type thing, you would have said, well, let's drop a perpendicular down here at 90 degrees. We call this here the height. And we'd have the base along here. And you would have said, well, if I do those two things, then I can work my formula of area of a triangle is equal to half the base times the height. You put your numbers in, you get your answer. That's okay. But are we always going to know the height or be able to measure it or figure it out? Maybe we won't. So what we need to do is try and get rid of that need for the height in there. And that's where the trick's going to come in because the height is not always going to be measurable or determinable. Just on a side note, this area, or this formula for area of a triangle, that one comes from the fact that the triangle is always going to be half of a square or a rectangle. So let's look at a, a square for a moment. Uh, there we go. So if that square has a length here, being a square, it's going to have a length there. It's going to be the same. But I'm going to extend this to just being a rectangle. So I'm going to change the side length here. I'm going to call this uh, L1 and L2. Now if I was to cut a line through the middle there and I only want this section here, then couldn't I do L1 times L2 and divide it by 2? And that would get that area, which is a triangle. Now, when we look at this purple triangle there, isn't that <coughs> distance there really the base of the triangle? And isn't this distance here really the height of the triangle? Getting us that half base times height idea. So that's where the formula comes from originally. And it doesn't matter if the triangle is a different shape or whatever, the same thing works. So let's get into this trick stuff. So we've got this formula. We're actually going to use that and we need that. But I'm going to redraw this triangle and I'm going to draw it with some different labels on it. I'm going to call this C here. I'm going to call this A here and call this B here. And remember we use larger, the capital letters for the uh, angles and the small letters for the sides. So if we've got that triangle there, that means A is down the bottom here. B is over here on the left, C over here on the right. How we label the triangle uh, doesn't matter where they are. Generally, we go around clockwise. Not always, but generally. But the thing that does matter is that the little b is opposite capital B. The little c opposite capital C, that's a must. Exactly what letters you use doesn't really matter, so long as they link together. Now here where the angle C is, I want you to just put a little marker there that we're using that angle and call that one theta. Doesn't matter what you call it, but call that theta. Now, what I want to do is I want to use this triangle here, sorry, this formula here. So I'm going to drop a perpendicular just so I've got it in there. And now I want to look at just this half of my triangle. So this would be A here, this would be C here. I'm going to call this point here, this midpoint, D. So that means that that point in there where the perpendicular drops down is going to be D. Label a bit more up, I'm going to label B. Oh, I won't actually label B there. No, I can, I can label B. Doesn't kind of link to D, but on this diagram it does link to B. A down the bottom here, and over here I'm going to call that the height, because that's what it is, and that's the thing that I want to get rid of. Yep? Would A be half of A, or would it just be A? Actually, it would be half of A, you're right. Yeah, this, this distance along here would be, would be half of A, we can put that in. I'm just trying, the, the labels here aren't critical, I'm just trying to link it back so you see where I'm getting it from. 
So now what I want to do, and remember, I'll put, put the angle in here as well. So now what I want to do is I want to take the angle and the height, and I want to combine them into one formula. Now remember we've got Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So we've got three trig ratios to look at. Because I want to use this one with this angle, I'm probably going to use this side as well. And the reason I'm going to use that side is and it's, it's an exterior measurement that I can get. We could use the half A. It probably would work, but not the way we do it. So I'm going to use that angle, this one here, and this one here. Now the one that works the opposite and the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle is sine. So right up here for me, sine of theta equals the height over B. Let's rearrange that. I'm going to rearrange that to height. I'm just going to put H equals B times the sine of theta. Because all I did is I multiplied both sides by b. Remember when I multiply both sides by b, I don't actually change the equation. It looks a bit different, but I don't change it. Left is still equal to right. Now that's going to be handy because bring back in that original formula that we used. Right? Bring back that original formula that we used. But we've got to kind of convert this a little bit at the moment. Because remember when I did this, I said it was half of the base. Well, the triangle I'm trying to work out, the base is A, isn't it? So I'm going to rewrite that formula to suit my triangle here. I'm going to write the area of a triangle equals half A times H. The A is the base of the triangle I'm working. H is the height. And hopefully you can see, well, I just worked out a formula for H. So why don't I take that <coughs> and put it in there? And I end up with the area of a triangle equals half AB times the sine of C. And you might say, well, yeah, OK, that's great, sir. But why is that so special? Well, it's special because... A and B are exterior side lengths, and C is the angle between those two sides. Look back on this diagram here. Here's B, here's A, here's C. So C is the angle between those two sides that I need. And think about that. If I've got two sides, use my arms, I've got one side of some particular length here, I've got an angle here, and I've got another side. See the end of my fingertips? I can only draw one side, can't I? Because that's fixed at a certain length, that's fixed at a certain angle, that's fixed at a certain length. I've, I've defined a unique triangle. So therefore there's only one side length that I can draw, so I don't really need to know the, the length of it, because the area is fixed. It's a unique triangle. That formula there, I can rewrite a couple of different ways. I can also write, Area of a triangle equals BC times the sine of A. I can also write the area of triangle equals AC times the sine of B. Notice in each of those cases, looking at our diagram here, it's two sides and the included angle. And that fixes us to a unique triangle, and therefore we can work out the area of it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that seem okay? It's kind of good. Yeah. I kind of feel like I'm on stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll watch that later. I'll put it up on here and we'll watch it. Oh, a little bit of it anyway. Are you still recording? Oh, that's okay. I can just cut the film anyway. Is it? I just do.